and to think about, excuse me. So just before I think about what are we going to do or what are we going to talk about in terms of artificial intelligence? I'd like to quickly look at the four different shifts that have been throughout the labour market over the past um, various different centuries known as the Industrial Revolution. So Industry 1.0 lasted, occurred in the 18th and 19th century with steam power and cotton gin playing an important role with this time. The second revolution began in the 19th century and it was the discovery and assembly line production. Henry Ford was responsible for the world's first moving assembly line for cars, allowing it to be significantly cheaper and lower cost. Another century then passed and we're seeing partial automation, computers and even robots. Then we're moving into what we know now as Industry 4.0. This started in the early 2000s, and it's with one thing that we use every day, and that is the internet. So this next step is seeing production systems, components, and people all communicate via a network, allowing a lot of productions to be nearly autonomous. So, one thing that is the cornerstone in these areas in Industry 4.0 is artificial intelligence. So I hope it isn't going to be a surprise when I highlight that talent acquisition managers and hiring managers are using this throughout their recruitment processes. According to research firm Absolute Market Insights, the market for AI recruitment platforms is hugely growing to a compound annual growth rate of 7.6% through to 2027. So it's fair to say it's here to stay and how can we make sure that you're equipped with the knowledge and tools required to adapt to it. Now, given the advantages that recruiters gain when they leverage AI within their roles, it certainly makes sense. There was a LinkedIn report that found that 67% of recruiters and hiring managers say that AI saves them time, while 47% of the report it reduces human bias in the hiring process. And then lastly, 31% believes it delivers better candidate matches. Now, there's a few different areas where recruiters use AI throughout their job cycle process, including how to source candidates, how to screen them, how to interview with them, and then even using them as an engaging and scheduling in candidates. So today, 99% of Fortune 500 companies are using applicant tracking systems. It's going to be to filter incoming resumes. And in fact, even many of the small and mid-sized businesses are using ATSs to speed up their own hiring process. So what this means is it is more than likely when you are going to be applying for one of your preferred job positions, it's going to go through an applicant tracking system before it even reaches the hiring manager. Now, Companies, as you would be aware, are going to be hiring for multiple positions at once, and they're going to receive hundreds, if not thousands of job applications. So while they receive that many resumes and CVs, you know, it's not feasible for them to read through each one. And of course, this is why many companies are using this throughout the world um, to help them make informed decisions of quickly identifying the top candidates. Now, there's many different platforms out there. However, I found the source from JobScan that the most popular one at the moment is from Workday. The more you can find out about these type of platforms, um, the easier it is for you to understand how you can make sure that your CV is going to be suitable for the applicant tracking systems and essentially making sure that your CV is going to be ranking in the top candidates for that role. So luckily we do have a tool in the Career Development Centre that will help you with the applicant tracking system known as the CV360. And Ryan will talk about this shortly. Another aspect that 
um, companies look for is really how well is your CV going to be matching their job description. So I just wanted to put it here before we move on to the second piece, um, what your job or resume or application could look like in the back end. So as you can see here, you know, you'd have various different names and it would often be ranked in a matching. That could be matching keywords, it could be matching job requirements, various different things. So the more you can align your own CV with the job description, the better the, the results going to be for that applicant tracking system. So another aspect hiring managers are looking into is using artificial in intelligence throughout their initial interviewing processes. So now more than ever with the pandemic, um, hiring managers are having to think of creative ways on how they can do those initial interviews. With traditional face-to-face -face, um, meetings on hold, the solution has really come in the form of asynchronous video interviews. So this is also known as AVI and applicants film themselves um, and they answer a set of predetermined questions um, and there's no human interviewer present there. So in some cases, these recordings are then actually ele elevated by a hiring manager or in others, artificial intelligence and facial recognizing software are actually used to assess candidates. So once you do these asynchronous video interviews, you might not actually then go through to the hiring manager until you've passed that step used by AI. So while companies report that this saves them time, it saves them money, it saves them a lot of various different things, it's often not very comfortable for yourselves as candidates going through the process. And it can often feel like a one-way Zoom conversation. So as the pandemic continues, and of course, digitalization continues, the more confident and comfortable you can be with various different processes that are in place, the easier it will be for you to um, portray your answers in a confident and um, you know, well-meaning manner. So I guess with that in mind, the more confident and comfortable you can be with these type of technologies, I think that's going to be really key for your successful job hunt. So one example of one of the most popular software platforms out there is called HireVue. So they say they're a leading um, company and it's going to be used in more than 700 businesses worldwide, including one third of the Fortune 500 companies I just talked about before. Collectively, they say all of their clients have conducted over 10 million interviews through its platform. I suppose that's the thing, it, it wasn't too long ago that the idea of this asynchronous video interviews was unpopular. In 2012, so less than 10 years ago, it was actually only 10% of companies using this type of software. The majority, they preferred initial telephone conversations or in-person interviews to follow. But as um, technology is expanding, and of course, smartphone usage is expanding, it's making it easier for candidates like yourselves to upload any videos, regardless of where you are or what type of device you have. So now, many companies are looking into this and really thinking, how can this fit into their initial screening process? So one example I wanted to, to show you here is Unilever. So I know Unilever is a preferred employer for, for many of you. And they recently partnered up with HireVue to run this through for their Future Leaders program, which is often for business graduates. And you can really see the results here, how um, they got the results of 90% faster hiring, and they actually saved one million pounds in their annual cost saving. So it's safe to say this was very successful for Unilever and they're continuing to use this platform. So I guess this comes down, like I said, with the last one is around confidence and being prepared. So to give yourself the most best possible chance in these type of interviews is really about preparing as you would for an in-person interview. So it's in important that you would plan the type of questions you think will come your way. 
there's no room for improvisation within these interviews. And of course, there's no pleasantries during the start. It's basically straight into those questions that they're going to ask you. And because of the highly structurized nature of AVIs, you won't actually be able to ask for any clarifications. So the more prep work that you can do, the more confident and comfortable you are going to be answering these through the video. And a few other things is making sure that your background is quite neutral. So there's nothing that's going to distract the artificial intelligence bot or even the hiring manager and making sure that you're looking at the camera um, while you do your answers. So above all else, practice is key to making sure that you're feeling confident with this part. And Ryan will take you through a tool in the CDC shortly that provides you with the option of answering interview questions over video and you can see yourself in the recording back to learn from. So AI is actually also being used throughout job search engines. This is going to help enhance your job, your experience as a job seeker on sites such as Indeed, Seek and then LinkedIn as well. So this alone for candidates can save um, you a lot of time in what is a very time consuming in the activity. So my example on the screen here is LinkedIn job recommendations. So this shows you jobs based on the searches you have, job alerts, profile, and even the activity and company and post that you engage with on LinkedIn. So to save you time on LinkedIn or other search engines, um, what I would recommend is that you set up job alerts. This can be done on LinkedIn, like I'm showing in this short video here, or there's the option to do it in the Career Development Center. Anything that can help save you time to be sent jobs directly to your inbox that's related to your location, your industry and your skill set is really going to help as well. There's also, as I'm sure you're aware of now, the feature on LinkedIn, which is the open to work. By clicking this is showing that recruiters and hiring managers that you are actively seeking new roles. You can even put the type of industries that you would like as well. So with that in mind, you know, there's many different job sites that use AI and it actually creates a lot of value for yourselves as candidates, but it also makes it very easy for recruiters to find the right people and creating you know, benefits for both parties there. So my final example of how AI is used throughout the recruitment period is in recruitment assessments, such as aptitude tests or personality tests. So an aptitude test is an assessment used to determine a candidate's cognitive ability or personality. These are extremely common in job assessments as it can be used to predict the likelihood of a candidate's success in a job role. So this always um, also eliminates any bias that might be there as it's a standardized administration. You're likely to encounter them across many job different industries, regardless of what profession you will be going into. However, they're going to be specialized based on your role. So the tests come in many different formats. They could be um, a verbal or they could be non-verbal. So non-verbal tests could be some of the ones that I've listed here, which numerical reasoning, um, inductive reasoning, it just really is going to be assessing how your ability is to handle numerical data, patterns or problem solving. Then the other type is verbal reasoning. So this is really looking at situational judgment tests and comprehension of various different situations and assessing how you would react um, and make decisions in that moment. So the best way to test and maximize your chances for these um, aptitude or personality tests is really just to practice them and become familiar with identifying patterns, recognizing question styles, um, and ultimately gaining confidence in taking these tests. Now we have various different practice material available in the Career Development Center. So again, that center is packed full of information to help you with your job application. 
So just in summary, those were the four biggest areas that I found when I was doing some insights and research for this webinar and really looking at, okay, so over the past year, what has changed within recruiters and how are they recruiting that's going to impact your job application? So like I said, one of the biggest things um, that 99% of companies are going to be using if it is a large company is applicant tracking systems. So the more aligned your CV can be for those applicant tracking systems, it's really going to help identify you as a top candidate for those positions. From there, it's really looking at online interviews for that initial screening. And then if you go forward through to the last few rounds, you would most likely do some aptitude testings. So with all of these in mind, it's really good to have the, this type of knowledge and apply it when you are looking at the tools shortly in the Career Development Centre. So I will now pass over to Ryan. Um, so with BGA membership, you will all have access to this online Career Development Centre, which is available in your members area. So you do need to log into the members area and then this should be in that same area. And there's various different tools available, um, but I think Ryan will spend his time focusing on the ones that are going to be impacted from AI. So I will just stop sharing my screen now, Ryan, and pass over to you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Rachel. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Now, I haven't started my video for a reason because I'm going to show you my video within the tool and the interview tool and it won't work if I'm here, but I'm going to share my screen now. and. Not to repeat what Rachel's just said, but I'm going to take everybody through the Career Development Centre, which is exactly as described. It's, it's a benefit to you as a BGA member. Um, just 60 seconds on us, Ab Integro, before I jump into the tools. We've been building platforms to support career growth um, and building the tools and content that populate it for, for almost 15 years now. Um, we, we, we began life working with academic institutions, so universities and business schools to support students um, and have branched out since into some large executive coaching programs, membership benefits as we see today. And a lot of our tools are even used by um, large corporate organizations, things like law firms, consultancy firms, um, banks, to support internal career growth of their employees. So where there's internal mobility and they're encouraging employees within an organization to apply for roles. They deliver the same tools I'm about to show you here um, internally to support an internal applicant and give them the best possible chance of succeeding in a job role. Um, and there are thousands of resources in here, which is not my plan to go through every single one today. Um, as Rachel mentioned, I'm going to focus on some key areas. So what I want to go through today is firstly looking at CVs and how we're going to support with CVs specifically in relation to um, the applicant tracking systems and how the platform will help you get around um, any barriers they might present. Um, we'll then talk about interviews. And again, on following up, Rachel said, um, we'll look at the interview simulator tool and a lot of the learning content we have around it, which is around building your confidence when answering questions on the video, um, particularly with nobody behind it, as, as just described. Um, and then we'll finish quickly looking at the job search engine and some of the features in there and functionality um, that helps you just stay on top of the latest vacancies and filter out a lot of the noise that comes from a job search engine and just see what's relevant to you um, and then I'll finish with some of those practice assessments that help you just be ultimately prepared um, but in terms of a CV before we get on to the more clever stuff of checking it if anybody here or any BJ member doesn't have a CV they're happy with maybe you don't have one that's ready to be sent for the roles you're now applying for as you leave education for example there is a CV builder tool. So the tool will format the CV in a way that is going to be applicant tracking system friendly. Um, so it will make sure that all of the sections, so your education section or your work section or your skills section are laid out correctly on the Word document so that they'll be read by an applicant tracking system. Um, and it's down to you to work through and fill out the information. So you can fill out all of your education background, any work experience, any skills you want highlighted in the CV, you fill them all in here. Having completed that, you then you can download a Word document, which comes in various templates in terms of layout on the page, um, which pulls all of that together, as I say, in an applicant tracking system friendly way. So without looking at any of the other tools I'm about to show, which do become increasingly clever, um, 
you can you, you can be confident that the CV you've downloaded from the CV Builder tool um, is ready to go into an applicant tracking system. There's more you can do with it to make sure it excels within that ATS and stands out from everybody else, but this will be ready to go and everything will be read and it won't cause any problems. Um, we then have a bunch of learning content specific to applicant tracking systems. So Rachel mentioned there, it's really helpful to, to understand an applicant tracking system when, you, when, you're, well, when you're applying for roles. And nowadays there's every chance when applying for a few roles, at least one or two of them are gonna be using an applicant tracking system. So there's tools in here, which will talk to you about what an applicant tracking system looks like, what exactly happens to your CV once it gets uploaded into one, potentially how to spot one when you are applying, if there's anything obvious on the page where you're applying, gives you an indication that it's going to go through an ATS before reaching a human. Um, and all of this learning content, I'm not going to repeat this because I'll talk about our learning content a couple of other times within the CDC as I go through. Um, but we work with pan a panel of employers and a panel of professional coaches, so highly qualified career coaches, each with their own specialisms, qualifications and, and an in-depth background. And it's all available to you in the CDC. Um, we're very conscious that online learning and online tools can sometimes be a little bit anonymous and you don't really know where the advice is coming from therefore how credible the advice is um, so we've been as transparent as we possibly can be all of the advice comes um, via our content team who package the advice into short e-learning courses or written articles or, or recorded videos but it all comes from this panel of coaches you can click into any one of these coaches and you can get a, a written and video bio of that coach to know um, what their background is and why their advice is worth listening to. Um, but all that aside, we come onto the actual tool, which is CV360. So you'll find the CV Builder and CV360 under the CV Tools menu um, in the CDC. Um, I've already jumped into one here, but what it's going to ask you to do first when you come into CV360 is to scan your CV. Now you can pull it directly from the, the CV Builder um, and you don't need to upload anything, or you can upload any, any Word document um, or PDF. It doesn't have to come from the CV Builder at all. If you have a CV ready to go, you upload it into the system. And what it will do straight away is it will give you an overall score. Now I'm using Using a really good example here we're at 96 percent already um, it will tell you how many checks are run which by stand what well, by default sorry is 58 so there'll be 58 different checks run across the cv again replicating that applicant tracking system and doing what an applicant tracking system will do but showing you the output in the front end rather than it doing it behind the scenes and passing off to a hiring manager um, and it tells me of those 58 checks i've passed 56 and there are two failed in there um, if I had run this CV more than once, so if I'd made some changes and re-uploaded it, my score history would be here as well. So you can see your score history over time. There's no limit on how many CVs you upload in here. You're more than welcome to upload 30 versions of the same CV until you get to a stage where you're happy with the score and you're happy with all the checks that have been passed and therefore ready to be, to be sent off. Um, the next thing you'll get, before I get into the specific checks and what's right and what's wrong, you'll get a one paragraph overview. Now, Rachel was showing on screen there uh, an example of a back end of an applicant tracking system. This is that paragraph that's going to be pulled together about you from your CV. So, so what this has done is it's, it's scanned our um, one, one and a half page CV here, and it's summarized in one paragraph, um, Andrea's experience and what she's bringing to the role and whether or not she's relevant. So without even going into the rest of this, which I'm about to and show those 58 checks that are being run, you can quite quickly get an idea of whether or not this is going to match what they're looking for in their application. So when you look at that application um, and they list the skills, competencies, values that are really important to them in this role, you want to make sure these are coming out here in your summary paragraph too. And if they're not, We'll see in a minute how to make sure they are. We'll see where these things are coming from. So it's telling me they're strongly concentrated on employability skills, particularly leadership and management. As we go down, we're going to see a, um, a, a skills diagram um, showing which skills are being highlighted most strongly. Now, I strongly suspect what we'll see is leadership and management is the, the biggest in that graph. Um, if that's not what this role is looking for, you probably want to go back and reevaluate how much you're mentioning leadership and management within, within your CV. Um, if it is what it's looking for, Fantastic news, and you can feel pretty confident submitting this CV for an application. Um, so that's my one paragraph. You can even click here and see the full ATS version of the CV. Um, so it converts it just into a text document. And you'll see exactly what it looks like in the ATS if you click into there. 
or we can scroll down and we can see all of our checks. So the checks are broken down, those 58 are broken down into six different categories. Um, some quite simple, like the file type, um, language, things like spelling and grammar. Um, some that you wouldn't necessarily be aware of when just looking at the CV, for example, the, the, the skills diagrams or um, the presentation and structure and whether or not the ATS is actually able to pick out specific sections of your CV because if your education section is not using a properly headed header, it will just skip it. And as far as the hiring manager is concerned, they're going to see that you have no education history and therefore probably going to deprioritize your CV to quite far down the pile. Um, so let's start with file. So it's telling me here that this run four checks, I've passed three. Every one of these sections has a video giving you a quick overview of all of these checks, why we're running those checks and why they matter in an ATS. So if you'd like, you can first watch the video. Um, but I can see I've used the correct type of file. Um, we'll come back to this. I've got the, a good file name because it's showing my name um, within the name of the file and it's under 24 characters. The size is fine. Again, something you won't always notice, but if you're uploading quite a large PDF, for example, it might just be rejected by the ATS um, because it's too big. So those are checked. However, it's recognized that the age is over a year, um, sorry, more than two months old. Um, in this case, actually two years old. Um, but anything two months or older um, is going to be deprioritized in an applicant tracking system um, because really it's going to assume that this CV has not been written for the role specifically. Therefore, it's going to prioritize any files that are, that are newer. So there's an easy fix to this, right? We could open up the Word document, save as, um, and resave it, then re-upload it, and it's going to have an updated date of today. So it's an easy thing to fix, but something you might not notice when sending out a CV into an ATS. Um, moving down, we've got presentation. So presentations looking at you know things like word count, number of pages, the amount of white space. Am I using various font types or sizes or colors across the CV? Now it's checked all of these as correct for me, but again, if it wasn't, it would highlight them. So it tells me here it's found two different font sizes. Well, that's fine because as far as the system's concerned, as long as there's no more than four, the applicant tracking system is not going to have a problem reading it. Um, the same on the uh, the font color. So number of font colors found throughout is three. Um, we've used them correctly. That's good. White space, however, um, what this is telling me is that there is too much white space on the CV that I've uploaded. They therefore can make it um, look a little messy, can be hard to read for the human and potentially hard to read for the applicant tracking system. So we probably want to go through, um, add a little bit of spacing maybe between our lines. Maybe it does want to be spread across another page so it's not quite so, so condensed. Um, and have we overused any manual formatting? So is it, um, have we actually created the spaces in our Word document using tabs rather than actually formatting correctly? And therefore, it's going to be a mess in the ATS. Well, again, it said we're okay. Um, I'll move a little quicker through these. Structure. This is all about making sure our sections are highlighted. So like I said just now, you might have an education section, but the ATS might not be picking it out because of the way it's been formatted. Um, it's also confirming for me here all of the sections in my CV. So if you have a look here and you realize actually there's something missing that should be there, um, you can go back and action that. Um, I've, continued, I've, I've included contact details. We've got the right layout. There's no repeated sections. And also there's, no, there's not too much dominance in one section over another. Um, very easy to get carried away with an education section, for example, and only leave a paragraph at the end for your work experience. The system's designed to prevent that because that's not going to reflect well in an ATS. They want to see a, a good balance of education, work experience and skills. Um, and it's confirming to me that's OK. Content. So what's actually in there? Do I have a LinkedIn profile in there? Do I have my name um, and my uh, phone number and address? Um, are there multiple occurrences of my contact details? If so, I could remove them. Um, is there any personal information that really shouldn't be in there if I disclose, I don't know, my, um, my religion, for example, which just isn't necessary? The answer here is no, but again, it's going to make sure I haven't done that. Um, so it doesn't get deprioritized in an applicant tracking system, perhaps because it contains data that they don't want to receive due to GDPR and therefore um, don't want it in their systems. Um, and equally education, has it put my education in the correct order? Do I have a record for every single one? Does every um, entry of work or education experience have a date and a description? Again, it's confirming yes, it does. But if it didn't, it would highlight the one that doesn't to me. So maybe the dates haven't been done quite right. Maybe I've made a typo um, and actually it shows that I, I left the job in the past compared to when I started it. Well, that's really important in an ATS. I'm just going to read that and pass that on to the hiring manager. Um, you can't bank on a human um, accounting for typos and, and making an adjustment themselves. The ATS isn't going to do that. Um, and then skills that I mentioned earlier. So if you want to understand really what your CV is saying about you, this is the place to go. It's the skills section. 
Um, it shows me every single skill that's been pulled out from that CV and how it's going to be categorized by an ATS. So an ATS is going to say, right, well, you've mentioned payroll. We're going to call that human resources skill. Um, you've mentioned database modeling. Well, that's going to go in as an information technology skills. So you can make sure that matches. Um, and then here's, here's our skill dominance chart. So as I suspected, leadership and management is significantly bigger than any other. So 21% of the skills referenced across my CV that I've uploaded here is going to be attributed back to leadership and management by the applicant tracking system. Um, if what the role is actually asking for is self-management and initiative, well, only 3% of the skills across my CV are highlighting that. Therefore, the ATS is not going to say that's something I'm particularly strong at. Um, so I might want to go back and rethink that on my CV, maybe put the wording in around self-management and initiative, or at least linked words, um, in a few more times and highlight some examples of those. Similar here, it's looked at specifically employability skills. So we have a bank of the most common required employability skills, and we've pulled out 10 of those from this CV to show they're all there. And finally, language, probably the least glamorous part of it all, but it looks at your spelling, it looks at your grammar, it looks at personal descriptors and action words and make sure you've used a good number of them. It also looks at commonly used words or repeated phrases and make sure you're not just repeating yourself throughout. Again, it's said to us that we're good for that here. Um, and it's looked at sentence structure and length. So what's the average sentence length? Is my sentence structure okay? And then how readable is the CV? So it's given me 33% glue words across here, uh, recommends a limit of 40. So I'm just within that. So I passed that check. Um, and we've got consistency in terms of capitalization. It even gives me a time to read. So it estimates my CV is going to take approximately two minutes and 45 seconds to read. Now, that might seem insignificant. If the ATS tells the hiring manager this CV is going to take about 15 minutes to read, um, there's every chance they're not going to put that to the top of the list and they're going to go for some lower hanging fruit um, first. So that's all of the checks that CV360 runs. I hope I haven't bored you going through every single run. The idea would be now that I would grab that Word document, make my, in this case, just two adjustments to get myself to 100% and just re-upload it. So I'll go to rescore, re-upload the CV in here, it will run again, it will give me a new score here, it will update all of the che checks below, but it will keep a log in my score history um, of my previous score and where I've got to. So you can get a bit of progression going as well. So that's the CV360 tool. I'm going to move on now um, just to some of the interview tools. Um, so if you bear with me while I work out how to move to go to the, the Zoom. Here we go. Um, in terms of interviewing, we have similar content here. So remote interviews, and there's loads of learning content. This comes from the same coaching panel um, and panel of employers that we work with, but through to kind of you know, how to answer questions, how to ask questions, um, to specifics like the perfect camera positioning or optimizing your video quality. Uh, we even have some specific employers recently running webinars for us um, talking about their own online interview tips um, and how they recommend people approach an interview. And this feeds into the interview simulator. So the interview simulator tool has 100 questions pre-built. Um, you can browse those questions and every single question has a bit of advice on how best to answer it from the employer. Um, sorry, the employer that chose this question. So we got these questions from our panel of employers. We asked them, what's the most important question to you? Tell me why you want this job. Now, if I go in here, I've got some written advice on how to answer it. And if I played that video, which I won't right now, because it'll come through the speakers, it's the actual employer that chose the question on screen, talking about why it's important to them and how they like it to be answered. Um, where this tool really comes in useful, though, is I can go to a mock interview. Now, I could either select eight questions from that bank of 100, or I can select a pre-built interview simulation. I want to use my video and I begin. This is where my video should work, although Zoom may block it. Just allow that there. There I am. So we appear here. We get the question, tell me why you want this job. You record your answer there, which I won't do now. And then you move on. So you record your video. You get two minutes to answer the question. Right, what's different about me? So again, I answer the question here and I move on. Why do you want to leave? Such have you left your previous company? A very commonly asked question. So I come in here and I can answer my question, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what you'll get at the end is all of those recordings. So you can watch yourself back answering those questions. They're not going anywhere else. This is completely private to you. So nobody else will see those questions or your answers. Um, but you can watch yourself back. And then next to the video will be that written and video advice that I just showed you for that question specifically. So what research have I done about the organization? Well, I can watch myself answering it and I can see the advice that was given about how best to answer it. So it's all about building confidence when just answering questions on camera, especially when having to talk to yourself on camera where there's no one else behind it. Um, this should get you used to that feeling and get you comfortable with it. 
Um, and then I'm going to finish with the job search engine and the assessments. So LinkedIn is a fantastic example of a place that tailors job results to you um, and makes you aware of roles that are relevant to you. And we try to replicate that in our job search engine. So we have millions of vacancies in here. We have a team of researchers adding to it every single week. Um, and those are hand-picked jobs. We also have a number of integrations pulling in roles from some of the biggest um, job providers out there. So this is updating every single day. And it's a global job search engine. It works across about, um, well, 93 different countries in total, um, around 50 predominantly. Um, of course, you can run a search, and that goes without saying. So I could come in here and I could look for a finance role in London, and I can run a search. And that's fine. It's going to show me the latest roles that have been added. They'll be getting added all the time. Um, you may find a few of these featured jobs. Now, featured jobs that appear first are those that we've handpicked. So you know they've actually been handpicked by one of our researchers. Um, but below, we've got, there we go, 13,600 matches, which is not surprising. So I ran an easy search. It was finance in London. What you can do with this, though, is you can then save this as an alert. So if a finance role in London is what you're searching for, I can say, right, I want to save this search. And you can give it a name, it doesn't really matter. Finance jobs in London will suffice and save it. What that's now done, if I click into my jobs, and you can access this anytime within the CDC, is it set me a job search, um, sorry, a job alert for finance roles in London. And I can see here the email alerts are switched on. So what it's going to do, maximum three times per week, um, and only if there are new vacancies that have been added that match those, those search, that search criteria, um, is it's going to email you. It's going to email you links to those jobs. It's going to tell you what they are um, and links back into the CDC um, to view them and potentially apply for them. Easily switched off in the future, you can come back in, you can just disable the email alerts, or you can remove the search completely so it's not there anymore. Um, and you can add as many as you like. So I could then go back, run another search. Maybe I want to look for audit roles or tax roles to be a bit more specific um, in London. And I can save that search as well. The other thing you can do is up here at the top, sorry, I don't mean to click that, is you can set your job preferences. Now, what job preferences are going to do is similarly, they're going to keep you updated with um, roles that match the criteria I'm setting here. So again, if I say, right, I'm looking for graduate finance roles, I'm particularly interested in, um, let's just call it tax in the UK. Um, so we'll keep that one a bit broader. And I'm looking for full-time roles. So you can save these preferences. It's going to do two things. Every time you come into the job search engine, it's going to immediately pull up roles down here relevant to that. So you can see I'm getting finance, graduate tax roles um, appearing down here without having to run a search at all. The other thing this is going to do is when one of these vacancies are added to the database um, that matches is going to email me about that specifically. Whereas the job alert is more about the, the regular update once, twice, three times at most per week um, of roles that have been added. This is going to tell you every single time um, that a role has been added. Again, if you have the email alerts on, we don't force email upon you. You can very easily come in here and just switch them off to get rid of the email alert around that. And then it just does the platform functionality, which is showing you the latest roles related to them, um, to those preferences every time you log in. And to conclude, we've got aptitude tests and personality assessments for you to complete any time you like. So Rachel already described what they are. We cover numerical and verbal tests. We have inductive reasoning tests, diagrammatic critical thinking, um, even an E-tray exercise, and then a few, a couple of the most popular ones at the moment, the CAP numerical and CAP verbal style tests. You can take these as much as you like. It will give you a, um, a score at the end. It will tell you where you were correct and where you're wrong. And we update these regularly. So we actually work partner with a third party for these aptitude tests, whereas everything else I've just shown you is our own IP. Um, we build it, we design it. The reason we partnered with a third party here, forgive me, is that the, um, this organization provides the aptitude tests that are actually used in the interview process to a lot of the largest organizations in the world. So while they don't share the exact same tests that they are putting interview candidates through, we get the version from them, which is their designated practice one, and we get the updates from them every couple of months. So whatever changes they're making to their live aptitude tests that applicants are having to work through, we're getting those reflected back in these practice tests. So you can come back and try them anytime you like. And then the career assessments work in a similar way. Um, the two I'm gonna highlight is temperament and personality insights. So these are versions of the MBTI and big five personality tests, which again, some organizations will use in a recruitment process. So you can come in here, take these assessments. They take 10 to 15 minutes to complete multiple choice questions. Um, and you get a report at the end showing you your MBTI score or where you would sit in the big five personality scale. The rest of the assessments are skill specific. So you can understand things like your resilience, emotional control, um, stress management, um, 
style of giving feedback, key strengths, assertiveness, etc. But those are the two that I wanted to highlight there in terms of replicating what you might well face in an interview process. Um, and that's where I'll stop on the CDC. There's a lot I haven't mentioned, there's a lot I haven't covered. If you have time to go in, um, you'll find content behind every single one of these buttons. Um, but those are the areas I want to highlight in terms of supporting the application process, particularly in the, the new way in which we and organizations are working um, and applying for roles. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen there, Rachel, um, and I will pass back to you if that's okay. That's perfect. Thank you for that, Ryan. And of course, like Ryan said, there's so many different resources available for you to use in that career development center. And the best thing is, is that that platform is there for you to use 24 seven, and you can use it for as long as you're in your career. Um, so BGA membership will be with you for as long as you wish, um, and particularly useful once you finish your degree and might not lo no longer have those resources within your business skill. Now, I'm conscious of time, but we will just ask one question that, as I've seen, one member sent it through, and I thought it would be quite interesting. So perhaps, Ryan, you could give your advice on this. So the question came from Grace, and she was wanting to understand, um, is, is there value of having more than one version of your CV or multiple versions of your CV per job? Um, yeah, I mean, look, it could be subjective. But yes, absolutely. I mean... Really, we would suggest having a different CV for every single role you apply for, if I'm honest, um, and matching that up. And that's where the, the skills section of CV360 can be so handy. because It's not about rewriting the CV from scratch, but it's about looking at the, the application. Um, you know, most job applications have a, a bullet point list of the, the values and competencies, not necessarily related to that role, but they can even be company specific. I know at Ab Integra, we have our five competencies that everybody lives by, regardless of, you know, you can be in the tech team, the sales team or the marketing team um, being able to tailor your cv even that yeah in that, that smaller way so that you know it's going to pick out a few key words that are going to match what that role is looking for absolutely makes sense um, equally if you're applying in different industries your entire personal profile probably wants to be quite different um, if you're applying in the um, public sector and the non-public sector um, likely you might want to highlight a few different things or maybe you're applying for, for roles in, in a charity and again you might want to position yourself slightly differently if you were going into a, um, a bank, for example. So, so yeah, absolutely. We encourage it. And the CV builder tool I showed just now does facilitate it too. So it will save everything you put in there. So you can download a version of your CV then quite easy to go back and just tweak it slightly, you know, change some of the skills, delete a couple, add a couple in, and then download another version. You don't have to start from scratch every time. I hope that answers the question. Thanks, Ryan. And I think that's particularly useful. But do bear in mind, um, of course, with your LinkedIn profile and that it does complement your um, CV as well, as that's something that recruiters will definitely be looking at. Um, perfect. There was just one question on how to access the tool for the CV360. So for all of you, um, hopefully you are a BGA member. And I'll just put the, the link in here. So you go through to our website log in to your members area and the career development center will be the first one on your screen um, and then once you click through to that link you will see the page that ryan th showed you through today perfect i think that's probably spot on time so thank you so much for ryan being here and showing us through the career development center and thank you for all the bga members for coming along and listening to our webinar the next one will be taking place next week and it will be looking at the structure of how you complete your CV. So if you haven't registered for that, head along to our website and I look forward to seeing you all then. Bye for now. Thanks everyone. See ya.